The city of Richmond, California, check this out, wants to seize homes worth less than their current mortgage using eminent domain and then refinance the homes for less than their current value. All right, somebody's got to pay it off in there somewhere. It's just the latest sign of the government's growing use of eminent domain. Back in 2005, you'll remember Suzette Kilo went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court after the city of New London, Connecticut, used eminent domain to seize her home and transfer the property to a private developer. She and other homeowners lost their homes when the court ruled the private use by a developer would serve a public purpose, although as far as I know, that still hasn't happened. Alex Sharfin is CEO of the Sharfin Institute and a small business and real estate expert. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Shannon. It's good to be here. All right, so explain this thing to us in Richmond, California, because what it sounds like to me is that people who are underwater, their homes will be taken away whether they want to participate in this or not. Uh, the city is going to force somebody, I guess, to refinance at a lower level, but there's money that disappears in there somewhere. Where does that debt go? Who's paying for this? So, Shannon, when you look at this concept of eminent domain, I was really excited to come on and talk about it today because this is an emotionally charged subject and we should all be terrified here. What is essentially happening is distressed properties where the homeowner can't afford the mortgage, the, the government's going to seize them through eminent domain, then have somebody else refinance them and pay the original mortgage holder something. Now, here's the challenge. If this happens in Richmond, you tell me which major lender is going to want to lend there again. This is a short-sighted, misguided uh, solution to a problem that's already working itself out. And what happens to people who are responsible homeowners? It sounds like they're not going to have any kind of option like this at all, no matter how much they've struggled to keep their mortgage current. Shannon, it gets even worse than that. So if you're a responsible homeowner and maybe you're upside down on your home, you've kept your mortgage current, well, now the guy next door owns his home for less than what you owe, less than what he paid, and you're punished because now you don't have equity in your property, but he will soon. It gets worse than that, though. If you're the homeowner who's paid your bills, and you are doing everything you should, and then you want to move a year from now, but you've had 624 properties in your area seized by eminent domain, and a lender won't loan there, you will not be able to sell your home. Anybody who owns property should be terrified of this concept of eminent domain. As an investor and homeowner myself, I think this is one of the craziest ideas. And again, distressed properties are working their way through the system already, using realtors, going through short sales, even going through foreclosures. But doing this is a totally different strategy. It's unproven. It's dangerous. All right. Leaders there uh, point to the fact that nearly 40 percent of the city's homes, their mortgages are underwater. They're pushing for this. There are financial institutions now suing to try to stop it, saying it's unconstitutional. They want no part of this. If this was allowed to proceed, would this start happening in other cities? I mean, what kind of precedent does it set? Shannon, I think that's the most important thing. See, I think that what this is being presented in some places like a Robin Hood type scenario where we're taking these mortgages away from the big banks and letting people stay in their homes. But here's the challenge. This is not a Robin Hood scenario. What's happening is we are affecting financial institutions who have just recently loosened the purse strings on mortgages. If we set precedent here, we could see a scenario where interest rates go up, the cost of mortgages go up. You might have to have eminent domain insurance on your mortgage. This is simply short-sighted. And again, it's very misguided. This is what happens when politicians who do not understand homeownership, mortgages, the secondary market, or really how property is transferred from one person to another, come up with a harebrained scheme to solve a, a sh short-term problem with a very long-term effective solution. I still want to know where the money goes. Where does the debt go that gets written off? I mean, if, if is it financial institutions that then have to eat that and then they raise rates on everyone else, uh, meaning those who are keeping current with their mortgage are underwriting this write-off situation. I mean, where does that money come from? Is the government going to so weigh Shannon, in in here's, some way? Here's how it works. Yeah, so here's, no, 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 no. Here's how it works. It's even worse than that. If you are a mortgage holder on one of those properties where somebody can't afford the property, the city is going to seize the mortgage and then pay you what they determine fair market value is. So if you have a $400,000 mortgage and they determine fair market value is $180,000, you're going to get that lower amount and then they're going to sell that mortgage to another investor who's going to sell it back to the property owner. We're talking about people who already can't afford their properties. And you tell me, Shannon, do you want anybody in government valuing, your, valuing a mortgage you hold for the, how much you should be paid? I'm an investor. I own dozens of properties here in Austin. Eminent domain should terrify all of us.